We're just on the first ascent of Mount Upuga in Venezuela, one of these sort of top hat Tapui mountains where you get the rainforest and this mountain just goes <laughs> and then flat on the top. We spent four days living on the wall, camping on portal edges and in caves and all sorts of things. And it was just the most brilliant adventure. Rocks the size of fridge freezers just rocking as we went past. You go, oh, it's gonna, we're going to die. It was a brilliant adventure. And we, of course, survived. And it was magic. And everything was captured on camera. And the sound was amazing. And we abseiled off and walked back through the rainforest to this little tiny village. And early next morning, you just finished packing all the gear, had a game of football on the little village football pitch, goal posts, you know, kids six years old annihilating us because they're so much better footballers than we are. And you hear the drone with this aircraft coming in to pick you up and you're just going, yes, it's almost comfort o'clock. You know, you can't wait to be out of there really by now. And then the plane lands and a puff of dust comes off of the wheels as it lands across the touchline on the soccer pitch, because this soccer pitch is also the landing strip. And this plane is slewing all over the place, and you're thinking, he's not going to stop. He is never going to make it in time. And he can see the pilot, you know, in the cockpit going, I'm going to score the biggest own goal of my piloting career, and slice his wings off as he puts the plane into the back of the net. And he thinks, well, I don't want to do that. So he hammers on the brakes, and he nose dives into the penalty box and the propellers dig it up like this. So of course all the locals are absolutely mortified because this plane has dug up their penalty box and has effectively crashed. And it's now no longer comfort o'clock. You know, we're thinking, Oof, what are we going to do now then, boys, eh? So we got one of our ropes out and we chucked it over the tail and there's three of us swinging on it. And eventually, out it pops out of the ground and the propellers, well, actually, they look all right. The pilot was stroking them, thinking, oh, were they bent? And of course they weren't, they were all right. And we're going, we're looking at the nose, and it's completely smashed to pieces, thinking, oh, no. But you know, in the bottom of my rucksack, I always have at least one roll of duct tape. And we actually had some cardboard. So we fashioned the cardboard over the smashed up nose, and we wrapped a roll of duct tape, and we repaired the aeroplane. And then we thought, well, let's load it up. The pilot seemed very happy to fly. But of course, we weren't, because the plane had just effectively crashed. So we then got on a satellite phone and phoned the little airfield and said, you haven't got any more airplanes lying around the place, have you? And about three hours later, two little Cessnas popped out of the sky, made us just about escape before these enormous thunderstorms hit in the afternoon. And yes, the, the, the crashed plane flew back with all of our equipment on. So duct tape, you always have duct tape. You can fix aeroplanes. You can fix boots, skis, anything with duct tape. And I'm not sponsored by them, by the way. <laughs>